Well, would you look at that? It's been a week already. Welcome along, ladies and gentlemen, once again, for what is NORL F1 2018. Back again for round number 19 in Mexico, business end of the season, and a lot of news coming for these guys. Both Chazza and Nibbler serving qualifying bands. As well as Ragnar should be, as um, he seems to be completing a lap of some kind. Now, this is going to be interesting. If Ragnar is due to set a qual um, use a qualifying ban, however, he is not serving it. Which is going to be very controversial if he does not serve this qualifying ban. His do has one to his name. It will carry over to next week if he does not serve it. And he'll likely be further penalized as both Ferraris already sitting the session out will feel like they had a mutual understanding with Ragnar. Ragnar disagrees. So, we're on board with Man, who could take pull. That's very wide from Carl Spencer. He'll be very lucky not to get that invalidated, to be fair. Gets away with it. Heavy on the brakes is a little bit of a messy entry into the stadium sector. Still on provisional pull. Oh, but that's going to cost him. Danny Ibn Lahar will now take provisional pull away from Callum Spencer. It would have been close. It could have been Callum's. But at the end, Ragnar does serve it then. Gets away with it. Up to the line. Danny Ibn Lahar then will take pole position ahead of Callum Spencer. Dougie Aframan in third. And Lord George, surprising performance up in fourth. Good effort by the Mercedes. Hello, Sim Simmer. How are you doing? Hope you're having a lovely evening. Welcome along to another race here at NORL. So Lord Jord putting in quite a stellar lap to go P4. However, Dougie Afferman is up there on the ultra soft tyres, showing he could still have a little bit more pace than what we would expect. Kevin Jacobs up in a strong fifth position. Destes will line up in P6 on the ultras as well. Good performance from Manel Tanovic to go P7 on the super softs. Um, and then you have Merchi Lago and Galactic Skull 2 rounding out those who set a time um, as Ragnar, Chazza and Nibbler all taking a knee um, for their incidents in the USA, all being handed a qualifying ban. Looking for some drama here today. Yeah, um, you're likely going to get it with Nibbler, Chazza and Ragnar, arguably the three fastest people in the league all starting from the bat, that's going to make it a little bit dramatic, I think, watching them come through the field. Um, but as yourself, um, you, you know how races can go. You've done plenty of races in NORL. Um, so there's a lot of things to consider. But um, Nibbler needs to have a perfect race today. The, the best case scenario for Nibbler is that he bounces a perfect offensive um, and doesn't get involved in any accidents. Excuse me, I do apologize about that. Um, a case of him executing it well up until the front of the grid and then getting to... Um, and then he needs to hope his teammate gets a bad start. So, he needs to hope his teammate has problems getting up through the grid in the nicest way possible. That's the best situation for him. But we'll see how long it takes the drivers to make their way through the grid and who will encounter more resistance. Nibbler is the one starting last. Starts at the very back. His teammate ahead, and then Ragnar, who is going to be... The Ferraris are doing something interesting here that I like, especially Nibbler. Look how slow he's taking this lap. Now, this is quite... It, it look, doesn't look like much. It looks like he's just lagging behind, not concentrating. But it is quite a cheeky tactic, because Chaz is doing it as well. They're keeping quite a big gap to the cars in front on their qualify... On their formation lap, sorry. And the reason that they are doing that... The reason that they are doing that, sorry, I uh, just got distracted by what was going on in the racetrack. Uh, the reason that they are doing this is because the longer these guys take to get to the grid, 
the longer everyone else sits on the grid and the longer their tires cool down. Now, if you were someone in the midfield, you'd clock on to this, and if you didn't want this to work this well for Ferrari, you would start backing them up, which looks like there's a bit of backing up going on, but look how cautious the Ferraris are to stay out of the way, to stay out of the frame. So it's going to be very interesting for those guys. Best of luck to them, as always. But this is how long, look how long the main drivers on the grid have been sitting. Incredible tactics by Ferrari here to try and make the most of a bad situation from the quali bands. Nimbler finally makes it to the line. And we get ready to go racing in Mexico. Danny G is not impressed with the tactics of Ferrari. But it is a legitimate tactic. The game allows it. There's no penalties against it. And they've max maximized it to their ability. Lights out, and away we go then. Here we go. Thundering down to turn one then. Lord George made a position on Dougie Aframan early on. Utilizing those hypersoft. But it's Callum Spencer on the offensive. Danny Bin Lahar trying to take the lead of the race. Trying to look to go around the outside of turn one. For P1, he's going to go a long way around. Danny's going to have that cover. But Spencer up the inside. He's now going to go around the outside. Kevin Jacobs is out. There's been a big crash in the background. Lots of cars involved. And that's going to help the Ferraris get the positions back. Someone else is involved as well. As well. Dougie Aframan has dropped a heap of places. Is. A lot of cars making it for a clean Niblo up to P8. Shazza key up to P5. Nemesis is trying to do anything about it, but nothing doing. The Ferraris have got much warmer tyres than anybody else, so they've got more grip than anybody else right now, utilising that well. After a crazy start, sees Kevin Jacobs out of the race on lap one. Dougie Aframan's also an early casualty. Spencer tried to take the battle to Danny. Danny had a defence plan in play, and here we go. Nibbler now trying to make a move. Sorry, this is Chazza going for the overtake on Maka, and it is quite a pace difference. How long will Maka be able to hold on for? Because Mac is going a little bit wide. Is he going to try to stick his nose up the inside or is he going to let the brick go? The brick making the move around the outside gives him the inside for the next corner. Job done by Chazza. Up into P4 for the championship leader. Coming out the final corner then once again we can see Nibbler this time is going to make the most of the super warm tyres. Everyone's tyres will be up to temperature by now. But here he goes trying to make the move. Old rivalries reignited. Nibbler and Chazza um, have bad experiences with Ragnar. So what was he going to do? And he goes around the outside. Very late breaking manoeuvre. Can he try to get two in one? Oh, contact with the Haas car. But he makes it up the inside. Passes Nemesis. Two moves in one by Nibbler. He's up to P6. Hunting down his teammate. Devstez is in the pits. He's got damage now. How long is it going to take Ragnar to get past his compatriot of ne Nemesis Racing? Trying to hold it around the outside. We'll give him the inside corner. That's good from Ragnar. No contact made. A little bit of a off-track excursion for Nemesis to avoid contact. But goes wide in the double hairpin in doing that. Here we come then out of the next corner. And it is Ragnar still trying to find a way past. Meanwhile, there is a Red Bull going very wide and gone off on the track where there's just no grip at all. And uh, that the Sauber having to cut the corner to avoid him. Macken taking further avoiding action and now his teammates coming into play as well. What has happened to the Red Bull? Was he forced off? We'll have to review. But he's trying to vent from his teammate. And uh, a move done by Merchilago around the outside on that particular occasion. Then Ragnar now looking like he could set up a move on his teammate. But Chazza pulling alongside Lord George. Trying to get the move for the podium done earlier on. Lord George defending with all that he can. But how long can he hold on against the championship leader? The other Ferraris closing in as well. Could be a double pincer maneuver, and it's going to be a long send, and it locks up the front right. Holds out of it. Championship to consider, of course. Lord Jordan not in the championship battle, doesn't have to worry about it. Ragnar is going very offensive and gets the move done finally on Nemesis Racing. That's a McLaren going very wide in the background as well. That's going to allow Galactic Skull 2 to get a front row seat of what is going on in front of him. Anotanovic on the inside, Nemesis Racing on the outside. If he can hold the outside line, he'll have the inside for the next corner, of course. Anel just trying to stay out the way, but nice switch back from Anel Tanovic. We'll give him the inside. There was a little bit of contact. Someone's lost a bit of front wing during all of that. I'm not sure which car it was. It looked like a black piece of front wing coming off, so it could be damage. Oh, but I'm, I'm assuming it's damage for Anel Tanovic because he just was not able to turn for that next corner. Can we see any damage? I don't really see too much. Maybe he's just made a genuine mistake. 
Meanwhile, both Ferraris have had a large job for dinner, and Anil Tanovic is out. What has happened to Anil Tanovic? We were just checking in. We'll we'll try see riding on board with Destes. Uh, we'll keep an eye on Destes because he's got to come past the scene of the accident at some point. Has he just had a crash? Not sure what has happened. We didn't quite see. Uh, Galactic School 2 is now going to war with Nemesis Racing. Trying to go around the outside. Can Nemesis hold on? No, he can't. Job done with DRS included. We don't see where the accident was. Dougie Afro Man is now closing in. Both Salvers looking to make moves after a drastic start to this Grand Prix. Dougie Afro Man is almost out of ERS, so he needs to do some ERS conservation. Anything doing. Doesn't see any overtake maneuver. Looking to the inside. Anatanovich leaves the session, not impressed. Impressive start by the Ferraris, then up to fourth and third already. Odd job track extending to try stay with Ragnar, who has now made it past the Mercedes as well. Demoted the Mercedes down to P6. And the top three that we were talking about, top three chat, we've got more further contact. What has happened in sector two slash sector three? I don't see anything. Doesn't look like there's any actual contact or anything like that. Whatever it was has been quickly dealt with. Now the Ferraris begin their march onto the top two. Working in tandem as we've seen them do so many. Kevin Jacobs not happy with what happened at the start. Looks like there was a huge accident at the start. Unfortunately, Kevin Jacobs was the main person taken out during all of that. And um, reasonably disappointed. I don't think anyone can deny that, that they wouldn't be disappointed with what happened to poor Kevin Jacobs here today. But it was such a bizarre start to this Grand Prix. And we see with Mexico, it's such a bottleneck that these things are very easy to start. A very weird start to this Grand Prix circuit. So Dougie Aframam still trying to find a way past the Red Bull in the battle for ninth place. Machilaga's on the super soft, so his tyres will go longer. You would assume Dougie Aframam would have more grip, but five laps in, the Ultras are probably starting to run out of... Um... We've got a yellow flag in Sector 2. What's happened there? Not sure, but Lord Jod looks like he's made a mistake because he's now under pressure from the Sauber of Galactic Skull 2. We have more yellow flags in Sector 2 and Sector 3. However, we still have no reason for them. So here goes Galactic Skull 2 then, swiping past the Mercedes, down the inside, DRS wide open. No defense offered from Lord Jod due to the DRS, just making it so much easier for the Sauber. Gets the move for P6, done. Now, can he respond with anything? Will Lord Jod have DRS to try to respond to the Sauber's conquest up front? We'll find out. Here we go. And it's no, because it's a double dosage of DRS due to the detection point being earlier on. Nothing that Lord Jod could do but sit and watch P6 pass him by and try to capitalize on a mistake. But he's also got the very fast Italian runner right now of Nemesis Racing closing in quick behind. So needs to consider that. Mergio Largo is not too far behind these guys either. So really starting to get close and personal and um, Lord George started so high and that is an excellent move by Nemesis Racing if we can pull it off Ooh, Lord George cut the corner kept the position Nemesis had to go wide to avoid further contact there was a little bit of shoving off from both drivers there I think all is fair in love and war but like we we're saying Lord George started so high because he qualified on the hypersoft tyre seven laps in those hypersoft tyres are going to about have about as much grip as chewing gum so he needs to start thinking about coming in for a pit stop. But um, he's coming under pressure from ultra soft runners like Nemesis Racing right now. Meanwhile, there is a battle going on for P2 and P3. Chaz is trying to make the move on Callum Spencer and takes second away to keep the championship battle going. When anything doing, Nibblers watching this, begging that these two continue battles saying he could get involved. Chaz are on the inside with DRS. Can he get the move done on the Welshman? Locks up the front left. Very close, but fine racing here. Great to see this. And it's bested by Chaz on that particular round. Not enough grip left in them hypersoft tyres for Callum Spencer. He'll also need to start thinking about a pit stop soon. But Chazza is through. Next up is Nibbler. How long is he going to take to get past the Welshman? 
So Kevin Jacobs said that he hit Doug in the back and spun him around and he feel because he got hit from behind as well. So like we said, bottleneck situation once again. Now, Nibbler looking for anything. Callum Spencer looking very wounded on those tires and that's a send up the inside of the stadium sector by Nibbler. Caught Callum Spencer napping. Callum looking for any kind of return policy on that. No, goes wide, makes a mistake and he comes in, rightly so, to get rid of those hypersoft tires. Good move by Nibbler, catches Callum Spencer napping up into P3. So onto the super softs for Callum Spencer then. Lord Jord has had an absolute nightmare of a lap, has dropped all the way to P10 before even making his pit stop. So not great. Dougie Afferman comes out ahead of Murchielaga. Murchielaga trying to minimize the gap using DRS and Slipstream. But he doesn't really have much grip himself. Let's take a look at the tyres and see where everybody is. So you can see the runners on the Hypersoft. Danny Bidlaha leads on the Hypersoft. Being quickly closed in though by Chazza on the Ultras. Both Ferraris on the Ultras favouring them as the better race tyre. And we've seen pretty much everyone but Danny is now on the Ultras. And they've got rid of the Hypers because this is the state of the Hypers. They've got no grip or traction left whatsoever. And look how close Chazza is now to taking the race lead. Because Danny Ibn Lahar has no grip left. He's left it a lap too late. Needs to pit. He's under serious undercut threat from Callum Spencer and Co. at the moment. He comes into the pits now. And that will be Chazza taking the lead of the Grand Prix. An absolutely incredible. Just nine laps in, we have a Ferrari 1-2 from starting last and second to last. They are now occupying the front row of the grid. Same could be said for Ragnar, up into third. Of course, these guys all still got to make pit stops. But you cannot deny the speed of the prancing horse at the moment. So Danny Bin Lahar then is in the pit lane coming out on circuit now. Where's Cal Spencer? He's not close enough. So it could have been a lot, 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 lot worse for Danny Bin Lahar, but has not gone um, in the way of the Welshman. Uh, we can see a Tokyo drifting uh, Force India through the stadium section there. Closest gap on circuit is Murchilaga trying to hunt down Dougie Afro, man. Both of those guys on eight lap old tyres. However, Dougie's on eight lap old ultras. Murchilaga on eight lap old supers. So. You'd have to venture a guess as to who's going to win in that particular battle. Danny Bin Lahar will be closing in on those guys fast. Interesting that Danny Bin Lahar went for another set of ultras, while most of the guys that pitted, including Callum Spencer, went for a new pair of supers. So different, diverse strategies here in Mexico. A lot of guys feeling like the two-stop is undeniable. Some guys on the supers are going to try a one-stop. Be brave of them in the camp. Danny Bin Laha is trying to go around the outside. Move done on Merchialaga. Merchialaga doesn't have any grip to defend with. Job is complete. And he's very quickly gaining. Ragnar pits on the Hypersoft tires as well now. Ultra softs for him. Danny Bin Laha closing in. Looking like he's going to open DRS on Dougie Afro, man. And look at the speed difference. There's no way the Sauber can defend against that. Fresh tyres, DRS, a bit of ERS to boot. Meanwhile, in sync, Carl Spencer passes Merchilago behind and tries to continue his catching of Danny Bin Lahar. Dougie Afferman trying his best to stay with the Renault. Doesn't have the grip to do so. Though. A lot of understeer through that section trying to stay with the Renault. To be fair to him, he's kept it within half a second, but, but how long could he keep this up? It get a feel not very long. You can see chronic understeer in that Sauber. And he's lost a half a second just through that section alone. The Gaffer and a sitting duck at this phase to the new tyre runners. Now, when uh, did I just see Galactic Skull 2 is in the wall? We did just see Galactic Skull 2 hit the wall. Can't he just spun into the wall. Now he's got massive front wing damage. Danny Bin Lahai is going to get the move done up the inside of the stadium section. Galactic Skull 2's run of form up in the podium at the moment. Come to an end. He's made an accident. And he'll have to pit for new tyres and a new wing. That's going to drop him. Be lucky if that doesn't drop him out of the pits. Emerson Racing pits as well. Here goes Cal Spencer on Dougie Afferman up the inside. DRS, very similar story to what happened with Danny Bin Lahar. Dougie Afferman not even challenging. 
job is done for Carl Spencer. Dougie just doesn't have the grip to contend with the Force India. Let the position go. Yeah, he's got to score two. Then new front wing is on Lord George. Will just pass him in the pits. And then Deathstairs will be the next one Glad Scotty needs to worry about, but he's got more of enough of a gap than he needs for that one. Mac is having some understeer issues there as well. So Ragnar closing in on Merchilago. Sister teams then. Red Bull versus Torosa. Ragnar looking for anything. Searching for a weakness in that Red Bull. Gets a much better run. And now positions himself on the inside. Gets the move done. Corner cuts to get the move done there. He'll get a warning for that. But that was a beautiful exit. And just passes Merchilago. Brilliant move. However, it was completed with a corner cut. So, you know, give or take. But here we go then. Ferrari in the pit lane onto Super Softs. Looking like a one-stop strategy from Ferrari here today. Undercut attempt from Nimblo on the championship leader and teammate Chazza. Now, Danny and Bin Lahar should comfortably pass Nimblo with the undercut. Cal Spence is probably going to pass Nimblo as well. Here's Nimblo. And Cal Spencer should just breeze past him. You'd expect Nimblo to go straight for the slipstream, which he kind of does. Nimblo down into fourth then after that pit stop. But four lap younger tyres than the car ahead. Going to make it difficult for the man from Wales to defend. So here we go. How long is he going to hold on for? Carl Spencer breaks very early. Let's Nibbler go. And there you go. Nibbler up into the podium once again. Ragnar, meanwhile, passes Dougie Afro, man. Who's still trying to make these ultra soft tyres work. Where is Chazza on circuit? Is this man going to pit or is he going to stay out? So in comes Chazza into the pit lane. Speed limiter on. Now, how effective will the undercut from Nibbler be, I wonder? In the Inter-Ferrari battle. Because, of course, Danny Abin Lahar will pass him. Cam Spencer didn't quite pass Nibbler, only just passed him. There goes Danny Abin Lahar. And here comes Nibbler then. There's Chazza on the left of your screen. Much higher overspeed from Nibbler. Goes for the slipstream. Really going for it here. Chazza takes an ultra defensive line. It's the battle of the Ferraris. Round one. Nibbler's going to look to go all the way around the outside. That'll give him the inside move. Gets the move done on his teammate. Absolutely stellar move by the Australian. Up into P2. The Ferrari battle shifts in favour of Nibbler. And it's not much, but it's a little bit in the way of the championship. Every point at this stage counts. Nibbler P2. Chazza P3. But with what? what's the cost? 1% more worn tyres. One lap, sorry, I should say. More worn tyres in favour of Chazza. Will that come into play later in the race? Especially if these boys are going for a one-stop strategy. You can see here who is yet to pit. Just Dougie Afferman and Merchialaga doing monstrous stints on their tyres. They've got to be careful not to push it too far to get a penalty. But here you can see who the big gainers and the big losers have been. Nimbler gaining the most positions of anybody. Ten positions game for Chazza as well. And we're going through. Applause in the chat for Nibbler's overtake. They like that one. The Australian pulling off a Daniel Ricciardo-esque move. Doing his country proud. But here comes Chazza and the sister Ferrari. Now, Nibbler doesn't have a lot of ERS. This could be a bit of more of a battle round two because there's more ERS in favour of Chazza and he's setting him up for the second. Second DRS zone. Here goes Chazza, then DRS up, and then the battle for the championship goes to round two. Here we go, looking to go around the outside. Is there anything Nibbler can do? Yes, because he can hold it on the inside, but now Chazza, he'll have the inside in the next corner. Fine margins here, a bit of contact between the Ferraris. Going up into the double hairpin, Nibbler holds on for another lap, but Chazza surely will get a better exit. No, he won't, and Nibbler needs to start doing some ERS saving now because he's still under pressure from that scarlet red teammate of his in the blue helmet. Lord Jord is currently trying, but not succeeding at gaining on Galactic Skull 2. We'll keep an eye on that one. Looks like Galactic Skull 2 is pulling away from Lord Jord, actually. So Ragnar's gaining on Callum Spencer. Oh, but goes wide. That'll be a mistake. That'll cost him a lot of time. 
So here we go, round three. DRS for Chazza. Britain versus Australia, round three into turn one, anybody? Chazza still has more ERS though. And it's looking more and more. Inside then for Chazza this time is the line that he will take. Nibbler's going to try hold it on the outside as he so often does. Can try sneak it up the inside. Oh, contact between the teammates. Chazza's gone spinning around. That is huge for the championship. Callum Spencer passes. Ragnar passes. And it was such a minuscule contact. But it's had such a big effect on the race and the championship. It was like a pendulum effect. There was a small tap on the rear. Ragnar picks up a penalty for corner cutting in his pursuit of Callum Spencer. That was like Nico Rosberg and Lewis Hamilton all over again. Contact between the teammates. Not the first time we've seen it this season. And uh, I'm sure it probably won't be the last time we see teammates collide. So here we go then. Ragnar's looking to get the move done on Callum Spencer. Ragnar's been very, very, very persistent in his chase of the Welshman. Let's have a look in terms of tyres, who is looking in the better position for this battle. Uh, Ragnar's got a little bit younger tyres, but a softer compound, so they'll be wearing at a higher rate. Now DRS will open for the Italian in pursuit of the man from Wales. How will this battle look at to turn one? You can see he's using all his ERS, but Callum has about the same amount. He's going to try to use that to defend. It's looking like the Ragnar show is going to go around the outside. And they'll give him the inside for the second chicane. Callum Spencer's got to be aware of that, which he does. Cuts off the Italian's route into the chicane. But now the Italian will have to try to settle for a better exit to try to challenge it to turn number five. Is he going to be able to do it? Looking, looking, looking. He's going to come from a long way back, and it's a violent send up the inside for the Italian. Callum Spencer goes for the switchback. We saw Arnold Tanovic do this unsuccessfully earlier. There's not enough room to go up the inside of the hairpin. Is there anything Callum Spencer can do against the Italian, or is that say good night to third place from the Italian in the Italian team, of course? Toro Rossa hailing from Italia. Callum Spencer will try, hold on. He's doing well in the wake of the slipstream. A lot of understeer generated. Having a look up the inside, potentially for Carl Spencer. No, nothing doing. Through the hairpin. Jinking left and right. DRS for Carl Spencer now. Carl Spencer this time has more ERS than Ragnar, but it's a much better exit from Ragnar. That could make all the difference by the end of the straight, but I'm sure Carl Spencer will fully deploy that ERS. Ragnar doesn't have much. He's running out of it fast. The Welshman's coming. DRS, slipstream, mix free, ERS. All the components working together. Force India lucky for the move the inside. That's going to be a long way back. Almost scares Ragnar off the road. Going to have to wake up a bit earlier than that to scare off one of the most aggressive drivers in the league. And um, he aggressively defends that well, Callum Spencer. I just noticed the Force India lights on the dashboard. That's a very cool place for DRS lights. Just an honourable mention there. Callum Spencer still looking, considering he's on two lap older tights and a harder compound. He's putting up a good fight. He just needs to stay with Ragnar until Ragnar's tyres start degrading. And he's starting now because that's very wide from Ragnar out of the hairpin. And that's going to put him under a bit of pressure coming into the S bends. Look like a lot of understeer for Ragnar, but a lot of understeer equally for Callum Spencer because he's in the slipstream of the car ahead, which is just generating a load of dirty air, making it very hard to turn. Coming into the stadium section, down into fourth gear, down into third now. Looking for any way he can assault the Italian in that quest for the podium. How long can Ragnar hold on to them ultras? Callum Spencer's got a bit of ERS, but Ragnar's done a bit of saving of his own. Cal Spencer's just in DRS, so he'll be able to hold on to the tail of the of the Red Bull sponsored Toro Rosso, if nothing else. Breaking third gear. Trying to set him up. If he gets a good exit, he could have a run into turn number four or five. But he doesn't have an ERS advantage this time over Ragnar. He's gonna have to do it the hard way if he wants to overtake. He is way too far back to make an overtake, but all he has to do, like we say, is wait until those Ultra Sauce, which they inevitably will wear out before the Super Doffs do on Count Spencer. But if Count Spencer's trying to go to the end, he's got a long, long, long way to go, and I'd expect him to be conserving a little bit more. So I think Count Spencer will go along in the middle stint to have a, a set of Ultras available at the end of the race. Whereas I think, obviously, the Ferraris 
are trying to do the one-stop. Merchilaga, by the way, 17 laps on the Supers, definitely going for a one-stop strategy. He is battling away with uh, Galactic Skull 2. Ragnar goes wide once again. Running out of grip fast. As Cal Spencer looks for another opportunity out the final corner. Who gets the better exit this time? Ragnar just got a fraction better exit, but now Cal Spencer gets the run. And Cal Spencer has consistently more ERS again and a bit of DRS. The Ferrari of Chazza closing in on this battle as well. So these two guys battle that hard. Up the inside for Cal Spencer. He's going to get the move done before we even reach the corner. Good job. Closes off the racing line as well. What can Ragnar do in response? He'll try set up an overrun to try and get a better exit out of this corner. And Cal Spencer, Cal Spencer wheeze a little bit as he tries to get the back end under control. Now he will use all of his ERS under slipstream of Cal Spencer and I get the feeling there's going to be a send here. He's going to try to send it around the outside which would give him the inside. No. He'll try to set up the switch back. Cal Spencer tried to do this to him unsuccessfully and this time Ragnar's going to go for the inside contact. Big, big contact rubbing his wheel against the side pod of Cal and Spencer. Really getting aggressive here. Chaz is closing in on this battle too. And now there's, oh, Ragnar's losing the rear end. And now Chaz is going to get involved in this fight as well. This just became a freeway battle for third on the podium. Ragnar's losing grip, going wide once again. How aggressive does he dare be? We've seen one uh, vital send. And he did a little bit of tire rubbing, marking Calvin Spencer's side pod with a bit of Italian rubber from that uh, Pirelli compound of tire. But he's losing grip all the more. And that's going to allow Chaz to set him up. Surely Ragnar's got a pick because Calvin Spencer's pitting. Ragnar's not. Interesting to see that the harder compound tyre goes into the pit lane first and here we go then the battle will continue this time Cal Spencer substituted for Chazza battling into turn one we go Red Bull versus Ferrari up the inside you'd think the Ferrari's got this done however the Rebel does have a bit of DRS itself he's gonna try hold it on the outside which will give him the inside for the next corner no loses that battle to Chazza and now will drop back just a little bit and he will be able to stay in the slipstream. He does still have DRS, but so does Chazza. So he's going to have to struggle to stay near him here. And Chazza makes a lockup, but it's not enough for Ragnar to capitalize on. Battle for third is considered done at the time. With Callum Spencer making an early stop. Throwing his hat into the race later on. Now, Merchilaga is still driving around on 19 lap old super soft tires. And he's doing very well to keep out on them. However, I kind of feel he's running it a bit too close uh, to the puncture territory. Nibbler has closed in on the race leader in the meantime, and is going to go for the lead of the race, something he could really use for the championship here today. Danny going ultra defensive, but we've seen the Australian pull off a stellar move around the outside once. Can he do it again? It looks that way, and he's got the inside in the next corner. Can Danny set it up for a better exit? Nibbler's up into the lead. Danny doesn't look like he has a response, and with no DRS, he probably won't have any form of response. Unless he's got a lot of ERS that he can utilize, Nibbler has taken the lead of the Grand Prix on lap number 21. Danny Abin Lahar falls to the Australian assault. Nibbler P1. Now Nemesis racing in the pit lane as well. Galactic Skull 2. Merchilaga, after a mighty stint, finally gets off them supers and goes for some ultra soft tyres. Well earned pit stop. Lord George's in for another stop as well to get off the ultra soft tyres. Um, what tyres will he go on? It looks like it's going to be another pair of super softs, I think, to the end of the race. I think that is the case. No, he's on ultra soft tyres. So I'm not sure if he'll make it to the end of the race on those. Ragnar has retired from the session. Has there been an accident involving? I'm trying to see if we can see the wreck of Ragnar's car anywhere. Ragnar has had a crash. We're coming into the yellow flag. There he is. He's crashed out on the side. It looked like a dis... Yeah, he's lost the wheel. Ragnar's had a crash. It's out of the Grand Prix. And that takes one of the key players for the podium out of the race. And Ragnar's comeback for third place is gone. So Danny Abin Lahar then comes out on circuit roughly about eight seconds ahead of Cal Spencer. He's safe from any assault from there. All the drivers pick it up three positions as they pass the wreckage that is Ragnar's car.
Ferrari 1-2. Looking pretty strong right now. After Danny Pitts. And Chazza stays out. Ferrari 1-2 once again. Unless Cal Spencer and Danny Bin Lahar have anything to say about it in the last 14 laps. Long way to go on them supers. Oh, I thought we was about to see Lord John take a visit to the wall there. Big slap of understeer coming into the stadium section. Gets away with it. So, all things considered, um, pretty much all the gaps are massively far apart at the moment. We have Lord John about three seconds behind Destes. But not, I mean, he's gaining a bit. Doug Efferman is not gaining on Nemesis Racing. He's gained about two temps through Sector 1 so far, Lord Jord. And then he's lost another two temps to restore it to what it was, but then gains another four temps, so it's... Kind of swinging up and down at the moment in this Destes and Lord Jord battle. Of course, Lord Jord are much newer, much younger and uh, much grippier ultra soft tyres. So he'll gain on Destes through the demanding corners where the tyre grip is necessary. So we'll keep an eye on how long it's going to take those guys to close in on each other. I'm just looking if there's any other gaps to keep our eyes on. All the gaps are pretty strong out. So, let's head into the next lap and see what holds uh, awaits for us this time. Cut the gap down to just over a second now on Destes. Destes was running out of grip, it seems, on the super soft tyres. Must have worn them excessively because the, we've seen drivers do a lot longer stints than six laps. Unless there's been a few spins here and there. Lord Jord gaining profusely. Out of the double hairpin. Into the hairpin section we go. Now this is where it's a bad time to be behind another car. Because there's no passing opportunities. And you've got to put up with being in the dirty air of a car behind. Which can cause things like that. Which we like to call understeer. Now, how aggressive is Lord Jog going to be in the battle against Devstez? Car 87 versus car 20, I think I can see on the back there. 26. Car 87 versus car 26 begins then on the start finish straights. And it will be DRS in favor of Lord Jog. It's going to be a very hard move to defend against for Devstez here. Death says doesn't offer any defense, doesn't see the point. And Lord Jord is up into P9. Unless Death says has any comeback in the second phase. No, no grip to come back against them fresh ultra soft tires. Death says more of in a tire conservation stage than anything at the moment. He is trying, though. He's gaining time for that sector. Short shifts from Destes trying to dull the oversteer. But really, it looks like Lord Jog could just pull away at this point of the race. Kind of the only battle we have on the circuit at the moment. So, Ragnar leaves the session. He's had enough. DRS for Death Stairs. Can he come back at Lord Jord here? He's got more ERS. And he's got DRS. He's, he's closing in at a rate of knots. You know, he might have a chance here. Thinks about it. But too far back. A second DRS zone, maybe. If he gets a better run. Eh, it's a better run for Lord Jord. You can't deny it. But what can Death Stairs work with? Around the outside, maybe. Ooh very close 
to make in contact with the rear. Through the very technical sector two. Into the S bends is where Destes is going to suffer the turbulent wake the most from the Mercedes ahead. It's going to be very impressive if Niblo and Chazza can make it uh, to the end on the super soft tyres. I'm just looking at the tyre wear now. And they're on lap 14 and 13 lap old tyres already. And Merchialago was only able to go 20 laps before he had to pit. Now I'm wondering if these guys are just going to try get 20 laps out of these tyres and go on some hyper softs to the end of the Grand Prix. What a run from Destes, by the way, to gain on Lawjord out the final corner. This battle's definitely going to be on when it comes down to turn one. Lawjord is excessively weaving, though. That's frowned upon in racing, so might get in trouble if Destes decides to report that. I'm not sure how that would be viewed, but we know in uh, we know in real racing that that would be frowned. Oh, no grip for Destes trying to get the better run onto the second chicane. That's pretty much all over. This is not enough grip. Did well to not go into the wall with that one. Glad this score two's gaining on his team, Matt. So Ragnar, who crashed out a few laps ago, is in the chat saying, no, no, no. Lost it in the fast S's. After 14 results in the points, it could have been a good fourth. He was in the battle for third place when it all came down to it. But unfortunately, Mexico claimed another victim. And he is out of the race. He'll suffer some heavy losses in the points. But he should be safe to maintain his third place in the championship. And it's all to play for when we go to Sao Paulo next week. So... Closest battle on the track is the two Saubers. Now, we saw Colin McAllister hit the wall earlier, and uh, we saw him brush the wall on the exit of the final corner just a moment ago. And he's looking for anything that he can. However, it does look like he's corner cutting a little bit in the 98 car. Cannot deny that. Cannot pretend I didn't see that. Um, so, you might have some warnings. Coming to the stadium sector. And head out around the final corner we go. DRS then wide open in just a moment. Or was he within DRS? I think he was just out of it. He got a better exit, but wasn't in DRS uh, detection territory. Lord Job picks up a penalty that could put him on the back foot against Destes again in just a little while. Salva's really going at it at the moment. No DRS for Galactic School 2, though. Death says could have. There goes Colin McAllister to the inside, surely. Doesn't outbreak his teammate. Death says coming into play. Lordjord has got DRS on Nibbler, though. Oh, no. I thought he was going to dive bomb the race leader then. That would have been something interesting. Through the S bends. I can't tell where to look. Now, Lord Joe's actually getting DRS off Niblo at the moment. That's really helping him against Destes. Galactic score two makes the move into the stadium sector on his team. Does his team out of any other option but to let him go? Doesn't look that way. Galactic score two passes Dougie Afro, man. At the final corner. It will be DRS back in favour. Destes has dropped behind Lodgeord a bit. DRS then open for Dougie Afro Man. Looking like he's going to try and make a move back on his teammate. How will his teammate choose to defend this? Dougie Afro Man looks to the inside. Doesn't outbreak Galactic Skull 2. But we'll try to set him up for a better exit. Nothing on that particular occasion. Has DRS, but that's about it. Lord George is still getting DRS from the race leader here. And he's that's actually saving him from Death Stairs. This is very interesting. 
and then he lets off as to not pass the race leader so he can continue following him using his slipstream. Oh, but he makes a mistake, and that's quite a big mistake. That will bring Destes on the back of him. However, he still has DRS from being one second behind the race leader. Is Destes going to try anything? No, 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 not yet. Wait for his opportunity. It's got to be soon. I can feel it brewing in the air. It's a very interesting tactic, and it's probably not a bad one from Lord George, just using Nibbler as a DRS beacon, really. He's got to be careful, because obviously the race leader's on 18 lap old super softs, so he's not going to be the fastest out of corners, so he's got to be careful not to run into the back of him and uh, lose his front wing or anything like that in the slow corners. Lodge odd looking. Then out the final corner we go, is Lord Jog going to be within DRS of Nibbler this time? He's a bit further back than he has been. This could be Destez's opportunity to take P9 back away from the Brit. Here we go then, we're heading into turn one. DRS open and no DRS for Lord Jog this time. He doesn't have much DRS either, they're both on about equal levels of DRS, so it's going to be all DRS to play for. Looking to the outside, would give him the inside for the next corner if he can keep his nose in, but no, backs out of it. Conservative driving from Destez saves the day for Lord Jog, but he gets DRS on a second attempt, and he's going to be looking to send it up the inside, potentially he looks like he's a bit too far back to be honest. Oh, but very late on the brakes, almost going into the back of the Mercedes there. The double hairpin, nothing doing. We'll have to settle for another lap of following him through the S-Bend section. So let's have a look what else is going on on circuit. It is pretty spread out other than this battle at the moment. Yes, there's, I could have a pop up the inside here. Nope. Um, just looking at the tyres now, the Ultrasoft's going to be tough for these Ultrasoft. Ooh, especially if you took your drift out the final corner. And it's definitely going to be hard <laughs> to take these tyres to the end. wonder if you know how they live in Mexico. Here we go, Destes in the slipstream once again, despite having a poor exit. Looks like he's going to make the move up the inside, but he's got to close off that door. So, oh, big contact between the two. They're still battling, still side by side. It's still all love and fair in love and war. The Lord Jod holds it around the outside this time. Destes has DRS, the Lord Jod does not. So Destes has got to outbreak him on the outside line. Anything Lord Jod can do, no. Position nine goes to Destes. But for how long? Steph says makes a mistake going wide. And Lord Job will look for a comeback, but no, in, no way through. Stays behind. Both of these guys, I think, will have to pit again. I'm, I'm very skeptical about if the Ultras are going to make it another four laps without puncturing or just being plain undrivable. Through we go, the hairpin. Then to the final corner. So here we go then. He's going to be in the slipstream. Will he have DRS? He will. So can Lord Job make a comeback on Destes? How hard will Destes fight this? This will be interesting. To the inside for Lord Job UK. What has Destes got to offer? Nothing. Sits back down and just waits for it all to be over. Now Lord Job will get a double dosage of DRS. They should be able to use that to pull away unless Destes gets a better exit. It looks actually quite similar in terms of exits there. Just quickly checking who had more ERS. Destes does have more ERS than Lord Job. We could really use a graphic for that. Uh, that'd be very nice if the F1 gets... Oh, but Destes has to get out of the way for the number two uh, position two, sorry. Ferrari making his way through the traffic. Now, where is Lord Jog going to choose to let Chazza through? Because this could be quite important. Now, here he goes. He chooses to let him through here. Is Destes going to be able to pull him back through? That's not a good... Uh, I can see why he let him through there. 
but he's now got to follow the Ferrari himself and give himself more understeer. It's a very tricky situation. That's what's looking to give Death says one hell of a run. Audi S bends into the stadium section. He's got to do it around the outside. If he can hold it on the outside, though, oh, Death says almost shoved off the track there as Lord John hopped the curb, but no contact was made. Good racing between these two. And Death says we'll get the exit again now. It's very hard to predict who's got the better tyres at this point when you, you consider that Lord Jord has increased wear due to being on the ultras. Death says aren't in the best of shape either. Two laps to go. And I think these, these guys are actually going to go to the end on these tyres. Now, I'd be... Ooh, that is a Daniel Ricciardo-esque send from Death says. Doesn't pull it off, but the intentions were there. DRS then for Destes up into the next corner. Is he going to be able to pull it off up the inside? He did one dive bomb, doesn't make it too. Lodge goes a little bit wide. And Destes will sense that opportunity, but makes a little bit of a mistake himself. Now, this is what I thought would be interesting. Someone like Callum Spencer in fourth place, who had nothing to lose, is going to pull out on Hypersofts and do another few laps. How much time can he gain? in two laps because the the guys on the ties around them are going to be very very slow because they've got to be nursing the tires but the tires themselves are going to have no grip whatsoever now i don't think he'll gain enough time to get third but i think it's something that other teams will look at and consider doing more of the same because i think it's worth the risk at this point Right, so here we go for the next round of the Lord George versus Deathstairs show. This time it's Deathstairs on the offensive with DRS and more ERS once again. Going to be hard for Lord George to defend this one. He goes for a very aggressive inside line. And Deathstairs will just look to take the racing line, which will be faster at the end of the day. Can he pull off a move? We've seen Nibbler do this move a few times today. Can Deathstairs pull it off? Lord George keeps his nose in the right place, but it's Deathstairs who will get the better exit on the run up to turn five with a double dose of DRS. And Lord George holding a very tight inside line once again, looking to go around the outside. Breaking late, Lord George still on the inside, cutting the corner but to try hold that position, but Deathstairs gets the move done. But the but Mercedes is still there, he's going to send it from a long way back. Contact between the two, Deathstairs has the racing line, and now Lord John will try to hold it around the outside of the first S bend. That'll be a very brave move. Contact between the two, that was never going to work. Deathstairs has somehow come off worse there, a little bit of a pendulum effect. Now, and now here we go, they're trying to let the Danny Abin Lahara, the Renault, they're trying to let him through. Big corner cutting going on by all three drivers to drive on contact. Destes does get the move done in the end. The Renault came to his aid after he was, um, he made contact. Lordra tried to go around the outside of the S-Bend, which is always, Destes was always going to understeer out. That's the racing line through there, so I think it's all is fair on that one. Destes is now there, but Van Destes used Danny Abin Lahar as a DRS buffer the same way Lord Job was using Nibbler as a DRS buffer. Yes, he can. So DRS for Destes should make Lord Job's life a little bit harder in gaining and passing. Now, this is what I wanted to talk about. Five seconds in a lap gained by Carl Spencer on Danny Abin Lahar. He's not going to be here, unless Danny makes a mistake, he's not going to be able to catch and pass. But I think it was definitely worth the risk as he sets the fastest lap of the Grand Prix. Lord John's looking for any opportunity as we're on the va very final lap. Chaz has been really gaining on Nibbler in the last few laps. Shame it's the last lap. I don't think that is going to result in anything. Lord John's looking. Oh, huge corner cut by... Lord Jordan definitely fairly penalized for doing so, um, making his own Mexico as he tries to chase down. We can see the confetti of Mexico spray though. It has been a Ferrari show and it's been what a performance from the back of the grid to take a 1-2. And across the line, Nibbler wins the Mexican Grand Prix, Chazza will finish second and it looks like it'll be Danny Abin Lahar holding on to take third. Count Spencer did a bold strategy, but nothing came of it. Destes wins that battle against Lord Jord. Bold strategy by Count Spencer. Definitely does. Definitely took it, uh, and was definitely the right thing to do. He had nothing to lose, and um, yeah, it looks like he'll come home to take P4 quite comfortably. It's a good result for Count Spencer at the end of the day. Nemesis Racing will take a solid P5 home for Haas today, and then it'll be the Saubers.
of Galactic Skull 2 and Dougie Afro Man taking 6th and 7th. Murchilago will be the last man to finish. As Death says, Lord Jordamanka all crossed the line in respective positions. There is a crashed out Force India um, of Death says. He's just pulled over. He's had enough, hasn't he? Um, and there you go then. What a crazy race. Both these guys started uh, by employing an early tactic. It was This um, plan was all in place before the race even started by taking a very slow formation lap to slow down everybody else. Um, when made them wait longer on the grid to cool their tyres down. Some guys in the chat didn't like that, but there's no rule against it. And they come back, and you cannot deny, whoever you are, you cannot deny that it was impressive. They came from the back of the grid to take a 1-2. Niblo takes some points away from Chazza. He has two rounds more to do the same, to try and win the championship. And here he goes then, celebrations in Mexico. Danny Bin Lahart, well-earned podium as well. Honourable mention. Well, it was a Mexican Grand Prix, and it was as crazy as it could have got. Ferrari pulling out the stints here today to take a 1-2 from what looked uncertain. That's been one of the most dominant performance, performances sorry, we've seen from Ferrari all season. Great effort. And um, it shows you the pace that these guys have. Unfortunately for them, they're probably staring down the performance balancing act, wondering um, uh, how that's going to affect them going into next season. But um, it has been a great job from them guys today. Nibbler wins and starts to make inroads on Chaz on the championship. But is it too late? He's got two rounds to do some more spectacular drives like that. 14th and 13th, last to first challenge anyone. Ferrari pulled it off here today. Thank you so much for watching. And uh, until next Sunday, we will see you then for another round, round 20 at Sao Paulo. Can Nibolo win the championship or is it Chaz's to lose? Until then, take care and goodbye.